saison du Pont. Welcome to another edition of Band Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have just come back from the People's Republic of Yorkshire and I survived, I didn't get lynched and in fact I absolutely fucking loved it up there. We went to York, me and the missus, and it was amazing. I have to say, I, I really do envy the people who live in York. It is such a fantastic little city. Really, really impressed. We stayed in a place called Ilkley, which is about that's half hour outside of York and honestly the scenery there is amazing now I know I take the piss out of Yorkshire and all that and why not but in all seriousness I absolutely love York it's probably my favorite city in the United Kingdom at the moment apart from London of course but honestly the people there the scenery there I couldn't have wished for a better weekend break it was absolutely amazing one of the highlights was of course I popped into the house of Trembling Madness and unfortunately there was no room in the bar upstairs it was packed out so I had to make do with just having a quick shop and buggering off but you can't have everything can you I mean it's a popular little bar and yeah they just weren't letting any any more people in there so I just had a quick scoop round and I saw this line on the shelf this Saison DuPont and I thought I'd have some of that, and here we are. I also bought a Westmail glass, and I left it in the fucking hotel, didn't I? I am such an idiot. I was taking the piss out of my mate because we went to Belgium, and he bought a couple of glasses and fucking he smashed them. Getting out of the car, pissed, and uh, yeah, I still take the piss out of him now. I don't know whether to tell him or not that I left the fucking glass in the hotel. But we are where we are. It was a lovely Westmail chalice as well. It only cost me a fiver. Fucking gutted. But there you go. Anyway, let's get back to the beer. But I highly recommend the People's Republic of Yorkshire. I'm still going to take the piss out of it, but you know, deep down, I actually fucking love the place. It is amazing. The people there are fantastic and all. Real nice people. Anyway, this is Saison Dupont, and it is, it is one of the most famous Saisons out there. And it's been touted that this sets the benchmark for all other Saisons. And it's it's got a good reputation and it recently well, I say recently the 1980s that was when it became really popular because it was being imported into the United States and it became really popular out there and they started up in the production and again it's just it's just gone from strength to strength and there's a bit of, I wouldn't say controversy but speculation about the yeast that's used in this annual DuPont yeast uh, they reckon it's a mixture of different yeasts and there's red wine yeast in there as well now you know my views on wine but I have tasted some of the DuPont beers before I think I tried their amber ale I can't remember the name of it but that was really nice I have to say in fact it was very very nice indeed and that's what made me want to try this now I sort of given Saison a bit of a wide berth and the reason for that was I would picked up some when I first started reviewing beer I started reviewing some of the Saisons from the craft brewers and I was really wasn't impressed by them at all and I just thought you know what Saison isn't that great a style and then I've tried a couple of actual Belgian Saisons which of course is where it originates from I'll get onto that in a minute and uh, it renewed my faith in the beer so I've decided to pick up some of this now Saison is of course a it's a farm beer now what does that mean well it's one of these beers it's basically home brew and it's made usually with the produce of the farm so for example the malt that was available the hops and anything else that was fermentable really so it would sort of differ from 
farm to farm. And it was brewed in the winter months. And the reason it was brewed in the winter months is because there wasn't much work going on on the farm in the winter months, so they had a bit of spare time, so they would brew this. But it wasn't just to fill in the time. This would be refreshment for the, what they were called saisonneurs, which were seasonal workers on the farm who would be gathering in the harvest during the summer. So this would be what they, not this exactly, it would, be, it would have been a, a very, how can I put this, a base form of beer. It would have been unfiltered and unpasteurized, of course. There would have been some wild fermentation going on there. Obviously, it wouldn't have been as strong as this. This is quite a hefty ABV on this compared to what it was normally. It was low because, obviously, the farm workers, you, you know, if you had your lunch and you knocked back a few of these, you'd be out of your nut. And if you were operating machinery, there was just so much scope for injury. Farms are dangerous places, even now. They are dangerous places, so you can imagine what it's like if you had a few beers inside you and you was operating some heavy machinery. Yeah, you'd do yourself a mischief at best. So that's why the ABV was quite low. Then recently the ABV got upped when craft brewers started brewing these saisons, and this is where we are now. Now, as I say, this is one of the benchmark saisons brewed by a brewery called DuPont, Brasserie DuPont. They've been going since, well, They've actually been going since the 1950s, but the farm where they brew their beer, that's been going since 1759. That was called the Remo Derridier, I think that's how it's pronounced, brewery. And they were brewing Saison there, obviously. So I think in the 50s when Mr. Dupont took over, or no, he took over in the 20s, they must have had that recipe and passed it down. So I'm not sure how true this is to the original probably not because the yeast is different and there's probably well there is uh, modern brewing te techniques used as well i think they are i think their copper kettles go back to the 1920s or something like that and it's it's got quite a good history now of course this is brewed in the haynail region in a in a particular place called torp which is in the walloon part of French speaking part bit of Belgium hence the name Saison so there you go that's a, a potted history of the DuPont brewery and the DuPont Saison so let's investigate the beer and see what's going on there there's a load of gump on the side but it's 6.5 percent it's a 330 mil bottle it is it has Geographical protected status there, going by that label. There is the label. This cost me £2.10. Just so as you know, I'm not a bullshitter. I did actually get this from the House of Trembling Madness. Can you see that? I think, yeah, that's a £2.10 price drag from now. And that's it, really. There is there much stuff on the sides? Ingredients, barley, malt, water, sugar, hops and yeast. The malt that's used in this is Pilsner malt, and the hops are Kent Goldings and Styrian Goldings. Now, Goldings are a great British hop, but they're also, as the name suggests, they do grow them in Slovenia, or around the Slovenian and Austrian border. And they're well known as well, Styrian Goldings. They use them in a lot of beer. Kent, Kent Goldings, of course, are used in a hell of a lot of local beers to here. Shepherd Neem use them all the time and there's other great brewers that use them in their bitters and their ales because they do make a, for a great earthy and bitter taste depending on where you put them in the boil. Now I've heard they used to dry hop this, they don't do that now, apparently they just throw in a late edition load of hops. So without further ado, let's get it open and see what's going on. Right, I'll take these bins off because they're fucking killing me. Killing my nose. So there you go. Get this open. And get this into a glass. Now my nephew, he likes a beer. He tried some of this and he absolutely loved it. He said it's great and he said you've got to try it. I was going to try it anyway, but he said I definitely have got to try it. 
he said that he did say there was a lot of carbonation in it which is true because it's gone through it has gone through a genuine secondary fermentation you could leave this for a while and it would wow i can smell them hops from here oh that's bitter there's a little bit of clove and spice coming from that in fact no actually there's quite a lot as that settles down oh yeah coriander coriander and clove with some grassy and herbal notes but it's mainly the coriander and clove and it's nice there's a little bit of sugar in that or candy sugar sweetness but there's a bitterness to it and i think that's coming from boiled hops a lot of alpha acid in that there it is it's in, the, in the glass it's it's cloudy and it's unpasteurized oh, it does smell really good though i have to say yeah really nice typically belgian as well you would not mistake that for anything else now that's different from some of the other saisons that i've tried if in a blindfold test i'd say this was something like a a blonde or a maybe even a triple it's a ton of spice it really is i can't can't emphasize the spiciness on this it's clove coriander which of course is a herb <laughs> but there's white pepper on there as well and it's really nice it smells dry if you know what i mean there's a bitterness to it But it's nice it does smell good and it smells typically belgian as well and i think i'm probably going to like this so there it is that's as much as i'm going to get in the glass let's get it down the hatch bottoms up Wow, that is good. Let me dive in again. I'll get the rest of it in there, just in case there's any sediment at the end. We'll have another go on it. Mmm. That reminds me of a very nice Belgian blonde you sort of think there's going to be big ethanol on that and there isn't and at 6.5 percent I wouldn't mind a bit of ethanol on that it, it's perfectly understandable but there isn't that much but the finish is very very bitter now I did read that <clears throat> it's it's in all the descriptions saying that the finish is bitter and they're not joking and I think that's where the hops have been boiled quite early on and the all the alpha acid is released but it does make it quite nice. But it's surprisingly drinkable. However, what I will say, this is chilled. If you're not a fan of Belgian blondes, if you're not a fan of that clove flavor, if you're not a fan of the spiciness, and certainly if you're not a fan of bitter finishes like you get on some German pilsners you're probably not going to like this however if you are a fan of all that then you are going to love this it does go down very nicely indeed there's a lot of carbonation in that but it's not obtrusive not much candy sugar although there is slight malty sweetness on that like a i wouldn't say biscuit it's more of a doughy bread type sweetness type you get from a pilsner of course it has used pilsner malt so that stands to reason it's it does say that it's got it's got sugar in there but it that ain't really coming through yeah it's just clove spice and the bitter finish if you're a fan of vit beer you may like this as well it's got the big clove in there no banana 
though, which is the, the two flavours normally go hand in hand with Belgian beers and of course German wheat beers as well, but that's not there. There's no real banana that I can discern in that. Certainly not big if it is. No, it's just that bitterness and and the clove, but I'll tell you something, it does go down really nice, and I can see what they mean by this being a refreshing drink. Now this is chilled, and that's more or less how it's supposed to be served. And you do get all the flavours when it's chilled. If you, I think, if you had this cold straight out of the fridge, then I think you'd miss quite a bit of it. Don't get me wrong, it'd be refreshing and all that, but you, I don't think you'd get the the big bitter finish that's on this, or dry bitter finish, if you know what I mean. Mmm, it is nice, I have to say. That is a good one, and it's going down very nicely indeed, as you say. So I'm going to just drop that there for a second and give you the verdict. So what is the verdict on Saison Dupont? There's been a lot of hype around this from a few people I know, notably my nephew, he, he was saying to me that he really liked it. And as Saisons go, it isn't bad. Dupont are quite a good brewery. I tried, I think it was their, either their Brune or their Amber, I can't remember, it's up on the channel. And that was really good. It reminded me of a an English old ale. It was very malty and quite a bit of ethanol on it and it did taste good like a old ale stroke barley wine this on the other hand it's just pure Belgian beer this is the signature clove the spice and the hot bitterness on the finish but when I say hot bitterness I mean boiled hop so you've got the alpha acid in there which gives it that grassy bitterness if you know what I mean but it does make for a very refreshing beer and it only comes in 330ml bottles as far as I know, there may be 750 in fact I think there are, there is 750 and it's it's a good one. Now if you compare this to the French, the French had a beer that their farmers would brew, it's called Bière de Garde and to be honest I'm not really not a fan of that, I don't like that at all. Saison I'm sort of getting back into after Previously being put off Saison by, oh, I can't remember the name of the brewery, I think it was Marks and Spencers were doing a Saison. But that really put me off. And then a couple of weeks back I tried the Silly Saison and that was really nice. So that's what put me onto this because I put that review up on the channel and a few people said you've got to try the DuPont Saison. I've seen it about loads of times, I just never bothered because I just wasn't into Saison and my nephew got a, a big box of Belgian beers and he tried it and he messaged me and said you've got to try this so yeah it's a good I will say that I like it it's it's typically Belgium you would not mistake it for any other country's beer it's got big clove big spice big hot bitterness if you're not a fan of them flavors avoid this if you are you're gonna love it. I'm gonna give that an eight out of 10 because I am a fan of it all and I do like it. Is it better than the Silly Saison? I don't know, I really like that Silly Saison. That was really good, but this is good as well. Um, I'm not gonna make a decision here. Maybe I should have a shootout between the two, between the Silly Saison. If you, if you want me to do that, put it in the comments and I will do it but I'm not really gonna make a decision here it's a few weeks since I've tried that silly size and I do remember that being nice though but I'd like to try these two together see how they differ but that's lovely I do like that and that's a solid 8 out of 10 and it's definitely recommended and it's 330ml it's £2.10 got this from the House of Trembling Madness you could probably pick it up cheaper somewhere else Beers of Europe do it I think Beer Hawk do it, and a couple of them other. Honest Brew, I think, do it. Did Honest Brew do it? Not sure. But 
there you go. That's that is a good. I will say that it's recommended, and that's eight out of ten. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>